Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 27. First of all, I want to apologize for not posting on time this week with all this uh, COVID-19 craziness. I've just uh, been a little bit overwhelmed. Anyway, um, let's get cracking. So question one is in a basic arithmetic question. Um, it says, if store charges the following prices per pound, how much would a customer pay for 2.5 pounds of pretzels? All right, so here in the table, they're telling you that chocolate bars cost $10.05 per pound. Same thing for pretzels and almonds. So that's the amount that we would pay for one pound. So half of that amount would be half that value, of course. And twice of that amount in the table would be two pounds. Okay, would be the cost for two pounds. So you'll, all you have to do is add these two numbers together. That gives you uh, how much you would pay for 2.5 pounds of pretzels, which is $33. Okay, question, sorry about that guys. Uh, question two is a fraction problem, um, applied arithmetic, and it has two parts. So it says, Barbara ordered a pizza. If she eats half today and two fifths tomorrow, how much pizza will she have left? Okay, so this question has two parts because first of all, you have to find out how much pizza she ate, and then you have to subtract that from the whole pizza to find out how much she will have left. Okay, so you would have to add these two fractions together. And remember that the rule with adding fractions is that in order for you to add fractions, they have to have the same denominator. All right, the denominator is the number at the bottom. Okay, um, and what is the common denominator between two and five? Uh, the common denominator is 10 because 10 can be divided by two and 10 can be divided by five. Okay, so, um, so since these two fractions, as we said, don't have a common denominator, we have to make them have a common denominator, multiplying that fraction by five and that fraction by two, so that you end up with five tenths on the left side and four tenths on the right side. That would give you nine tenths. So she's eaten nine tenths of the pizza. But the question, remember, that's not the answer. The question says how much pizza will be left over. So the whole pizza would be one or 10 over 10. And all you have to do is subtract those nine tenths to get one tenth. So that's what is left of the pizza. Answer C. All right, so answer three, uh, question, question three is an algebra problem. Juan scored a total of one 190 points on two math tests. The score of the first test was 20 points lower than the second test. How many points did Juan score on his first test? All right, so here um, you can do this problem in two ways. Okay, the first one would be using algebra and the second way would be using the actual answers the options that they're giving you in the question. So Basically, they told us that the first test plus the second test is going to equal to 190. Okay, so your equation should be like the top row that you see there. Uh, we don't know what he scored on the second test, so we're just going to call that value B or X or whatever you want. And we know that in the first test, he scored 20 points less than the second test, which we had called B. So the first test will be B minus 20 and the second test will be B. Okay, so you set up your equation like that. And then what do you do on the left side? Well, you wanna get rid of that negative 20, so you would add a 20 on the left side, do the same on the right side. Okay, and the reason we're doing that is because now we can get rid of that number 20 on the left, and you end up with 2B is equal to 210. Okay, so you add just the two letters that you had on the left side and the two numbers that you had on the right side. Now all you have to do is divide both sides by two and it gives you that B is 105. But remember, we said that B was equivalent to the second test, okay? So B is 105, it's the equivalent to the second test. And in the question, it tells us how many points did Juan score on his first test. So we would take that value for B and subtract 20 gives us 85. Okay, so the correct answer is C. 
Okay, so maybe this um, system didn't work for you. If that's the case, there's another way to solve this problem. And that is using the answer options that they provide for you. All right, so they tell us in the question, right, that the results of test one, um, excuse me, plus uh, test two are going to equal 190. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just trying to get my charger. Okay, so um, so um, yes, so test one plus test two is gonna equal to 190. And um, they're telling us in the answer option uh, that those are the possible scores for test one, okay? So if we look at A, if test one is 73, as they're telling us in the answer option, then test two would be 20 points more, so it would be 93. If you add 73 plus 93, that gives you 166. So you can see that this answer is incorrect. All right, answer B. They're telling us that the first test is 80 points. Okay, so if the first test score is 80, then we know that the second test score is gonna be 10 points more, so that would be 100. 80 plus 100 is 180, so that's incorrect because the correct answer should be equal to 190. Answer D, 91 for the first test. The second test would be 111. That gives you 202. That's incorrect. And if you look at option C, 85 plus 20 would be 105, and together they add up to 190. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see that you can solve this problem in two ways. Okay, question four is another algebra problem. And it says, uh, job has three job offer, Bob has three job offers. They are evaluating which job would pay them more. Uh, pay is gonna be represented by the letter P and H is gonna be representing the hours worked. If Bob works part-time, so 20 hours per week, which statement is correct? All right, and on the left side of the screen, you will see the statements that they provide for you. And then on the right side, they're telling what you what the job offers, um, which each job pays. Okay, so for the first one, they tell us that the pay is going to be $8 per multiplied by hour, right? And we said that he's work, uh, they're working 20 hours, so it would be 8 times 20. So we, he would get $160. The second job um, seems a little bit better, right? Because aside from getting paid $8 per hour, they are gonna add $70 on top, okay? So you can see he earns 230. And then the third job, again, you would put that value for the hours worked where the H is, and it gives you 150. Okay, so you can see that the best deal for him, for them, would be to take job two. Okay, so the correct op uh, answer would be letter D. And the final question is a geometry question. A construction company is building a casino shaped like a pyramid. If the base area is 400 square feet, the perimeter is 350 feet, and the slant height is 50 feet, what is the surface area of the casino? Okay, and they're giving you all of these uh, surface area um, options here. Um, okay, so here what you would do is uh, remember that in geometry they give you all the formulas that you need. So you don't have to memorize anything as such, but you have to be familiar with those formulas because these are easy questions that you can, uh, you know, easy points that you would lose. So um, the surface area of a triangle of a pyramid would be half of the perimeter multiplied by the slant height plus the base area. So here what you would do is just plug in those numbers that they give you in the question. So the perimeter was 350, we said, multiplied by the slant height plus the base area. That gives you um, that number plus 400. So the correct answer would be um, 9,150. Okay, there's an extra zero there, I apologize. Okay, so correct answer would be A. I'm just gonna fix that right now. No, I'm not. Okay, the correct answer would be A, which we said was 9,150. 
Okay, folks. Well, I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you ever so much for your time. Have a terrific week. Keep positive, stay strong, and thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.